The number one pro for self-publishing is that you are in control. Happy Sunday and welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle Farley of MichelleFarleyWrites.com and typically I come to you every Tuesday and Thursday for my Copy Magnet TV series all about the fine art of copywriting, how you can start your business, grow your business, and sustain your copywriting business. And a lot of those principles you can use in any type of business but specifically um, but specifically in copywriting. Um, today is Sunday and um, my family and I had just finished watching Virtual Church and hanging out and I had an idea about starting a new series that focused on the art of self-publishing. My self-publishing journey actually started about 15 years ago when I published my first book of poetry. And most recently in 2018, I published a my children's book series, uh, Dudley Magnificent Presents. And I'm currently working on the second installment of that series now. Um, and through that time, I've definitely learned a lot. I had some growing pains. I made some mistakes. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to share my experience with those who are interested in, in self-publishing. And regardless Regardless if that is a children's book or a um, young adult novel or a uh, biography, whatever it is, uh, I felt like these self-publishing tips could help. So I'm super excited about it and it's not typically, uh, this is not typically my um, recording day. Like I said, it is Sunday. Um, and as I'm thinking about it, I don't even want to film in this room because my son is currently sleeping and I am not trying to wake him up before his nap is completely done. So what I'm thinking is that I'm actually going to shoot this outside. But first, I need lunch. So I'm going to make me a lunchtime smoothie and then I'm going to meet you guys outside. Let's go. Let's get started. So congratulations. If this is your first time considering self-publishing, I would encourage you to do so. Um, I will also encourage you to research what it's gonna take for you to get from idea to finished products. So this is my baby. I am so proud of the work that went into making this children's book. This was an idea concept that I had way before I was even married or even um, had my child. So. Um, I knew that it was always something that I wanted to do. Um, after my um, mom passed in early of 2018, like in um, February of 2018, I decided that I wasn't gonna let my dreams be deferred any longer. And so um, this was the um, first of many things on my to-do list that I wanted to, uh, to see to the very end. So self-publishing goes by many names, micro-publishers, independent publishers, self-publishers, um, all of those small presses, all of those are the same thing. There are a, it could be one person, it could be a group of people who wanna tell um, dynamic stories to a specific audience um, and they don't have necessarily the, the, the big pool like other um, larger publishers, but they follow the same processes in doing so. What we've learned in the last couple of years is that you can do so much through independent, just even having this YouTube channel, right? People can share their content in many forms now, and it's no different in self-publishing. So the first thing I wanna talk about is why do people self-publish, right? So before, it was like in order to be able to get your book published, you had to go through a agent, you had to get an agent, the agent had to, had to accept your vision, and then from the um, agent, they sent it on to publishers, and then eventually you'll get the call. But what was happening was that a lot of the stories that people wanted to tell, agents didn't think it would be you know, viable, wouldn't be sellable. And specifically for stories of color and for children of color, that's again, speaking about um, children's books um, and so it wasn't until I would say in the last decade or so that people have really embraced different stories from from all over the world about different people's experiences and so traditional publishers were looking for those stories that fit this mold that guaranteed them a return on their money and so there were a lot of people with amazing 
phenomenal stories that just weren't getting um, the recognition they deserved. And so a lot of people went to self-publishing. Self-publishing used to have a really negative connotation that you, it wasn't professionally done, that the quality wasn't good, that the person wasn't a great writer or storyteller. And now we know that that's absolutely not true. In fact, we have seen countless stories of independent writers who've gone on to self-publish, who've become millionaires, who've become quite successful um, by going the self-publishing route, right? And so that's got us all inspired to do um, some different things. So I would say the number one reason why people even consider self-publishing is because they are in control. And what I mean by that is that they're in control of the story, that it doesn't have to change, they're in charge of the characters, they are in charge of um, the messaging, they are in charge of um, the, the look, the, of the look and feel of the cover uh, they are in charge of their sales because let's be honest like when you are working with a large publisher you might get a um, um, you might receive some type of, of payment in the beginning but you won't receive anything else until everyone else has received their money with self-publishing you're up you're fronting your money so whatever you get back in profits is yours so that is number one reason why people go into self-publishing Second thing is like you, so you also have to understand what your motivation is. Like what is the goal of the book, right? Do you just want to share it just to share it? Do you want to make a profit? Whatever the goal of the book is, make sure that you know what it is because this is going to be some hard work and you have to make sure that anything that you're putting towards this book, everything has to be aligned with the vision is, the motivation is for your book. So, um, if your goal is to become a number one bestseller and to sell, you know, 100,000 copies, then your plan needs to match that goal. So also when you're on this journey for self-publishing, you really need to define your motivation. Why are you doing this? What is the motivation? Is it that you want to educate people? Do you want to inspire people? Do you want to make people laugh? Do you want to make people think? Whatever it is, just remember what that motivation is because when it gets a little bumpy along this road of self-publishing, you really want to have something to um, to look at. I always have some type of vision or goal. It doesn't have to be like 15, 20 pages. It could be a paragraph. What basically breaks down what your motivation is for this writing project why you want to self-publish it and what are you willing to do to get there but the motivation part is the goals part and i briefly touched on it in the last tip so your goal can be a lot of things some people want to sell 5,000 copies some want to give them out for free um, some want to use this as a marketing tool for something else that they're working on so whatever that goal is again that should be part of uh, a bigger plan do you want to you know make ten thousand dollars in profit right so that ten thousand dollars in profit means that in sales has to be more than that in order for you to make a profit so making sure that you have those goals um, set aside for your motivation so you know your motivations you want to inspire your goal is I want to I want to inspire people but I also want to have this much in profit by the end of this year etc 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 I'm a professional copywriter I'm also um, I love all things creative so I love writing films and other books and poetry and all these different things and so sometimes uh, it, if I'm not if I'm not clear about what my goal is then my focus can be off right we know that focus is power under control when you start to write your story or even if your story is finished in midway through this process you might think like oh what if I change this here or wait what if I do this here and so now you have veered off from what your original motivation was and what your original goal was so you always have to come back um, to the center and just make sure that you're focused if that means you have to have an accountability partner uh, if that means that you have to have a checklist or something but make sure you're focused because when you lose your focus the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna start to spend money and if you're spending money and lo losing focus you're gonna lose heart for the project and you it will never see the light of day so another big piece of self-publishing too that I learned is that sales and marketing is a huge 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 player in that if you don't like selling stuff to people you will have a problem because there's no one gonna sell your product better than you right so you have to know your why you need to know your who um, at your elevator pitch at any given moment you have to be able to say why you chose to write this book why is it beneficial uh, and, and where people can purchase it at right um, and what I have found um, even before my children's book was my poetry book that I didn't do a good job of selling 
my poetry book. I didn't do a good job at pre-sales. Um, I didn't do a good job at having more events and thinking outside of the box about what types of events that I could um, possibly get into. Um, I wasn't, I just wasn't fully aware. And while I did make decent sales with my Dudley Magnificent book, I could have done so much better had I taken the time and really had um, a strategic marketing plan of how I was gonna execute once the book was here. So just be mindful about that too. Like if when people tell you about sales and marketing, this is not something that you can just do in like three days or a week. You need to have a plan. You need to have um, a sales and marketing plan um, while your book is not even ready yet, when it launches, and then a couple weeks after the launch. Like all of that goes into, um, all of that should come into consideration when you're thinking about thing you want to ask yourself is how do you want to go about forming your company do you just want to print a whole bunch of books and sell them out your trunk or do you want to establish your own um, publishing company and probably join um, some type of independent publisher organization that can help you with distribution there's so many different layers to that and I'll do another video that talks about becoming an independent book publisher and the pros and cons uh, of that um, so but if you're thinking about just printing them out selling them at fairs or selling them at like different events that's totally fine um, but if you want to be online if you want to sell on Amazon if you want to sell in Barnes and Noble if you want to be on Target's website like you're gonna have to have an ISBN number and I'll actually probably do another you know what guys I think I will make this into a series so I'll do one on just how to get your ISBN numbers um, and how to establish um, a publishing business okay so these are just the basic tips so you need last thing I already kind of alluded to it was that be prepared to put up some money marketing is gonna cost you your website is gonna cost you um, um, any type of um, promotion if you're putting in ads if you're getting it reviewed if you're doing like Facebook ads or Instagram ads all of that is going to be um, an additional you know marketing cost completely done with your book right and you have your cover art you have a story it's been edited you have your ISBN number um, well even before you have your ISBN number you have to make sure that your pricing for your book is what you want it to be because if you're just selling it off your website from your house and you're selling it at $14.95 and um, all you have to do is, um, you know, you've already ordered a thousand books so you don't have to print any off just yet, then you could be fine. But if you are going through a distribution company and you have marked your book for $20 but your distribution uh, partner takes 10 uh, Amazon takes their cut, um, or other book publishers or other book distributors are getting um, a discount off of your book, then you want to make sure that it's priced right so that the remaining profit uh, is feasible. I, just, I don't want this video to go too long, but I just really want to encourage you that if you're considering self-publishing, to take these little tidbits that I gave you. Um, if you have the story, you have the vision already, that's great. Just start to keep in mind what other things that you need. Um, I want to keep this going and definitely do a series and I want to break it down by um, sales and marketing, I'm breaking it down by like getting your ISBN numbers, um, working with a distributor, all that stuff. So I hope you found this video helpful. If so, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Um, I will, um, I don't know, this is also new though. So I'm thinking Sundays might be the day for self-publishing days. So yeah so um let me know what you think until we meet again i wish you peace blessings have a awesome amazing sunday and we'll talk real soon bye you start to self-publish you really want to ask yourself do i just want to you know print 100 books and sell them out my trunk or do i want to step oh